Mr. Stitches loved decorating for Halloween. It was the one thing he looked forward to all year long, even before the calendars had been flipped over to October, before the late summer heat had begun to simmer down to a chilly breeze, before the dead leaves crunched underfoot. The autumn atmosphere began to creep forward from the depths of his subconscious. His days were tinted orange, and his nights were saturated with black. There's nothing quite like decorating for Halloween, he thought, and one can never have too many decorations. He peered around the gloomy attic, eyesight minimally aided by the late afternoon sun shining through the grimy window. Dust motes floated lazily in the stream of dull illumination, on a journey from nowhere to somewhere equally lonely. He had a difficult time finding what he was searching for, as he wasn't the one to willingly take down the Halloween decorations last November. He started looking in the garage, then the hallway closet, followed by the second floor crawl space, before making his way to the attic. This is where he finally found the bright orange plastic tubs, sitting forgotten for almost a year. Strips of duct tape labeled Halloween decorations, served the obvious purposes of indicating the contents and sealing the lids shut. But Mr. Stitches liked to imagine they served a much more important function, keeping untold horrors trapped inside. He hauled all three tubs down to the entryway and stacked them next to a black wooden crate sitting just inside the open front door. He took a second to catch his breath, and contemplated the crate. The black paint had been gouged off in several places, revealing shades of deep crimson or dull orange along the splintered sides. The crate appeared to be on the verge of collapse, but Mr. Stitches had no doubt that the rusty nails would continue holding the boards together for many more years. He often wondered how long he had been using the crate to store his most prized decorations. He had put out countless decorations throughout the years. Many had come and gone, were found and lost, bought and broken, and his ever-growing collection warranted new, bigger containers. But the black crate had been with him through many Halloweens. It felt like an old friend, and he couldn't imagine a year without it. After gazing at the crate for a few moments longer, he shook the thought off and turned his attention to the task at hand. Time to get busy, he said to himself, as he cracked the lid off of the first orange tub. Have to be done before the kids get home. The first orange tub contained many of the generic store-bought decorations that Mr. Stitches wasn't particularly fond of, but that still conveyed a sense of the comforting unease that came around every October. Life-size cardboard skeletons were plastered to the front door and hallway. Red light bulbs replaced the ones normally illuminating the front and back porches. Enough styrofoam jack-o'-lanterns were present to adorn each of the first and second story windows along the front of the house. Fake spider webs were stretched across the bookcases in the study and living room. A stuffed ghoul was placed in the rocking chair on the front porch, and a haunted house welcome mat was slapped down at the front door. At the bottom of the tub was a cheap skeleton mask, the remnant of some last-minute costume from years ago. Mr. Stitches set this aside. Nothing like the look on the kids' faces, he thought. They're always so surprised. The next two tubs contained more of the same, and Mr. Stitches quickly dispersed the manufactured horrors throughout the house. Candelabras with flickering flame bulbs were placed on the mantelpiece. A hangman's noose, complete with executed victim, was hanged above the entryway, and framed vintage photographs of Halloween's long gone replaced the smiling family portraits throughout the house. By the time he was done, no corner was left untouched. Every room, closet, pantry, and hallway was darkened, 
haunted, infested, or defiled. Scarecrows, zombies, phantasms, and unnameable horrors had spread throughout the normally cheerful house. He quickly stored the empty orange tubs in the hallway closet, and had a moment to stand back and appreciate the work he had done, before his eyes were drawn back to the black wooden crate, waiting in the entryway. Can't put out my new decorations just yet, but soon. He dragged the crate across the hardwood floor of the entryway and living room, removed the lid, sunk back into the leather chair next to the fireplace, and waited. Dad's already home, Michael yelled, rushing up onto the porch and through the open front door, and he decorated. Oh man, he said he was going to let us help this year, Lori replied angrily, trudging up the front steps and eyeing the outdoor decorations. He never lets us help. Michael dropped his backpack at the edge of the stairs and marveled at the skeletons, pumpkins, and various dreadful objects spread throughout the entryway and hallway. I hope he didn't decorate my room, Lori mumbled. I hate it when he puts scary stuff in my room. She made her way towards the stairs, suspiciously eyeing the fake spiders infesting the webs strung along the railing. Stomping moodily up the stairs, she set off to investigate the rest of the house. Michael continued to admire the decorations as he moved into the living room. Trying to take it all in at once, he slowly backed towards the fireplace, amazed at how quickly his normal suburban home could be transformed into something out of a horror movie. As his mind was drawn to the darkness and macabre surrounding him, his back foot connected with something hard. Startled, he turned around and noticed the masked figure seated in the chair, feet propped up on a black wooden crate. Dad, he shouted. Awesome job with the decorations. Lori's mad we didn't get to help, though. The figure in the chair remained motionless. Can we watch a scary movie before Mom gets home? There was still no response from the figure. Come on, Dad. If you want to scare me, you're going to have to do better than that, Michael exclaimed, as he slowly reached to remove the skeleton mask. Who are you? Michael stammered, the skeleton mask slipping from his hands as he slowly began to back away. Where's my dad? Nothing like the look on their faces, Mr. Stitches thought. They're always so surprised. He stood at the edge of the woods in the backyard, bony hands clutching the crate to his chest as death fell all around him, oak leaves swirling down from the branches above, catching in his stringy white hair and settling on his stooped shoulders. His gaze fell to the desiccated pile of orange, yellow, and brown leaves rustling at his feet, each one slowly turning a dark crimson one drop at a time. He gave one last look to the house before turning and receding into the woods, leaving behind a small puddle of the blood trickling from the bottom of the crate. Mr. Stitches loved decorating for Halloween, and he couldn't wait to get home to put out his new decorations. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell your story, or read a creepypasta, email me at the address in the description. Be good to animals, even people. This date in history. Was it really today's date? I'm not really sure. On this day, some years ago, that's not this year, I fell asleep. And then I woke up several hours later. It was crazy. This has been this date in history. Was it really this date? I'm not really sure. <sighs>
Sure. Sure. Sure, sure, sure.